time allocation and I thank Senior Council. The senior most going by the Kenya law reports before you. Uh, may I by the way, mention, mention my name. Mention Dr. My name. Camino. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my Lord, even the report of the East Africa law community confirms that. My Lord, uh, the point I need to make and I beseech you, because of the serious time that we had to prepare this application, I could only prepare for certain aspects of this application. My colleagues, Professor Gada, and my colleagues, Degu and Jiro, within the 20 minutes that you have allocated, I will say my piece. It is insufficient, but I'll try. Me, please give Ms. Professor Gada and Mr. Degu and Jiro 10 minutes each, and at the end, when we hear what the respondents are saying, you kindly give me, you need indicate, 20 minutes to do a report. That will enable us to be able to proceed without anybody feeling we want to be here forever. We don't actually want to be here forever. We want to deal with the business of the day. So that, that does not change any time allocations by more than 30 minutes. So I urge you a lot. So who's starting? Just, I'm starting. Okay. Yes. So that I do 20 or got a 10, 20, because he has to deal with some authorities. I didn't get enough time. At least I'm there with 10, then I'll do the return that. My Lord, the, the application that is before you is dated today. It is supported by the affidavit, soon by, it is supported by the affidavit, soon by Honorable David Muni Madenge. And uh, for the record, all lawyers from Matiba, Ogada, Debwa, and myself, the record indicates we act for everybody without drawing any distinctions because there will be, be no time for that. So we act for all the respondents, all the petitioners, for purposes of uh, E015. My Lord, before going on to argue this application, there is a small point that uh, I wish to make regarding the issue of regarding the issue of uh, why are we having a situation where to everybody watching we seem to be following an unusual path. My Lord, there is one simple, substantive issue of procedure that we need to point out. The petitioners are before you on account principally of the violations of the Bill of Rights. The petitioners are also here on account of the relevant provisions of impeachment. The petitioners are before you, my Lord, on account of the fact that the business that the framers of the Constitution ordered, one, for appointment of a nominee to take place within 14 days and for Parliament to do it within 60 days, somehow happened within four hours. My Lord, those are the principal reasons why we are here. And what is the immediate context? The immediate context, my Lord, and uh, why we are here is that when petitions are filed, the duty of this court under Articles 19 all the way to 25 is to ensure that it decides whether or not the violations as alleged by the petitioners has taken place. My Lord, the way in which the law, and this is express positive law, requires that to be done is by way of a judgment, by way of a judgment, is the only way that the, that, the, that the people of Kenya would be satisfied. Have these rights been violated or not? In order to ensure that that judgment, which is the express constitutional mandate, is given in circumstances that are not academic, Article 23 of the Constitution provides that conservatory orders may be given. 
When this matter went before your brother judges, probably a sister also, in their wisdom, they directed this matter as such of such an omity that we need to preserve the subject matter. That subject matter, my lord, the preservation of it would be to ensure the relevant office remains vacant until this case, through a judgment, pronounces itself. But my lord, why are we here and why is there a heated discussion? We are here and we are having a heated discussion because what is the clear intent of the Constitution is being circumvented. So that to ensure that the subject matter is not preserved. My lord, this would be akin to a situation in which somebody comes and says, I am being evicted and my things are being removed. A court says, stop the eviction process up to where it has occurred. Then the respondent comes and says, no, leave those uh, orders so that I can carry those things that I was, it is alleged I was unlawfully taking. So that my lord, in the face of the fact that what conservatory orders are supposed to serve, I beseech you, and I believe the entire country would expect that there has to be preservation of the subject matter of the application. So that, my Lord, now, that, that being the context, it is absolutely important while that we do not lose sight of the moment. It is heated, one, because there was a city on Saturday. Before application responses could be made, we found ourselves here. We were supposed to come here on Thursday. We are here on Tuesday. So that, my Lord, and there are a lot of matters that directions must be given. So that, my Lord, that context, would be absolutely important because when all is said and done, the critical issue before this court is a right under Article 25, the right to fair hearing and human dignity. Right to fair hearing and human dignity cannot be violated even during an emergency. My Lord, that being the background, I ask you, and we shall be asking you, because that is the context where all these things are happening, that you ensure that whether heaven falls, the High Court must stand up for nothing else, for the right to preserve the subject matter until this High Court pronounces itself through a judgment. Because that is express law. Having said that, my Lord, I come to the prayers. The prayers are like this, and we had already indicated. There are about six substantive prayers. The linchpin of these substantive prayers, my lord, is the fact that uh, the Deputy Chief Justice, under Article 165, does not have the power to appoint or assign, as the words used by the constitutions, members of a certain court to hear the matters. My Lord, Article 1654 is very clear. Where the Constitution say the President and Article 149 can nominate Kindiki, there is no argument that is made that a minister or somebody else can be made. We expect that. There can be no feasible argument where the Constitution has expressly said that the Chief Justice shall do something. The Chief Justice, in this case, did not empanel this bench. My Lord, we are urging this Honorable Court to make a finding that unless the Constitution is interpreted or amended to give the Chief Justice, the Deputy Chief Justice, the power to empanel a bench by express reading of the Constitution, she cannot be able to do that. Issue number two, my lord, is that it is not for nothing that uh, it is one of the biggest occasions that the senior most judicial officer is the one that the people of Kenya, judicial power, in the first place, vests in the people. Power by express words of the Constitution or to do this appointment and to act under Article 165 was vested on the Chief Justice. It is not by accident. It is by the express intention. So that, my lord, 
On the face of it, when a state officer who is not directly mandated to do something ends up doing it, and the public law judicial review, it is done every day, you did not have the power under statute or the constitution to do that. There are so many cases, starting with Madhu versus Republic, I think it was some time in 1974, where somebody at city council did something where the law did not allow that person to do that. So that, my Lord, all these cases we are aware of. So that, my Lord, as far as Article 165 is concerned, we submit that that is not possible. But, my Lord, this argument is developed a little bit further by the petitioner's applicants. Because the petitioner's applicants are saying that the Deputy Chief Justice, having usurped the powers of the Chief Justice, she proceeded to do two things. One, to sit at night to appoint a bench and to authorize that bench that sat on, on Saturday to conduct their business on Saturday. My Lord, those are irregular because as we are saying, when this, this is not a matter of public emergency. Of course, it was a matter of public emergency before the National Assembly and before the Senate. But because of the timelines we've given you, my lords, it is not a matter of public emergency. But Fire Harvey found herself in that situation. She decided to treat this matter as one of public emergency. Then, my lord, she directs come and sit on Saturday. We have set out in our applications and in our affidavit. There must be certain circumstances under our laws, the High Court Administration and Organization Act, that can justify for any bench to sit outside the, on Saturday and Sunday. There must be express reasons. Those express reasons, as we sit here, agreed. We still do not know them. And if we do not know them, Every, every Kenyan would be aggrieved by a decision made in these circumstances would have every reason to be concerned that from the word go, there was a conspiracy to commit injustice. My Lord, all of you have been honorable members of the High Court. There cannot be where there is no public emergency for occasions to arise that for the first time, you would effectively be accused. You engaged yourself in a conspiracy to undermine the constitutions and to defeat it in a manner that would amount to treason. So that, my Lord, the point that we make is that in the absence of a public emergency, what has so far happened is not only just unconstitutional, but something that would amount to violation of the constitution and something that would amount to violations of the penal code as far as the issue of observing justice is concerned. My Lord, for argument's sake, we proceed to make that argument. Let's assume that there was an emergency. We submit there was none. But let's assume there was one. If there was an emergency, then it was incumbent upon the Chief Justice to read, and they were in the newspaper and in the news, all these cases that honorable judges of the High Court from various stations had recommended to, for a bench to be appointed to hear them, to consider them and place them for hearing on Saturday and to fast track that hearing. But, my Lord, what is it that happened? My Lord, what actually happened is that you have a situation whereby the respondents, who are basically agents of the government of Kenya and its various appendages, have gotten their applications to be satisfied and to, for a bench to be specially convened to sit, because from the standpoint of the petitioner, to set aside the conservatory order in order, as the petitioners contend, the violations of the constitution may be completed. My Lord, Justice in this case, if it means anything, it must mean a very simple issue. 
the multiple violations of the constitution that are already ingrained and embodied in the various applications, we cannot allow them to be completed because this is what it's all about. This is what the decisions of the Chief Justice was all about, to complete the serious violations of the Kenyan constitution. By your oath of office, your lordships are committed to stop arrest for death and the government and its appendage, appendages that act in this manner. My lord, what does it amount in law for the Chief Justice to say you have about 15 or 20 cases, as I hear from my learned colleagues who have been in this matter longer than me? I'm here today for this matter, and I'm here because there is a constitution in Kenya. My lord, that being the case, there has to be satisfaction. If the Chief Justice, and she's a party, in this application, cannot be able to justify. Why did you choose to address the grievances of the Attorney General and the government of Kenya and leave the petitioners? The first right of hearing under our constitution, I deal with Mutunga rules every day, is that the petitioner will have their rights to be heard to prosecute their case. That is what the Bill of Rights means. The respondent, even under Mutunga rules, will respond and answer the allegations that have been made. But my lord, where the Deputy Chief Justice chooses to fast track the grievances of the alleged violator, common sense has to be affected. My lord, the conscience of this court must be bothered. Such conduct in the normal sense of things. We went through the removal of judges during those days. There was just minor infraction of the right to be heard, and judges were shown the door home. But my lord, here it is a systematic decision consciously made that would have very harmful effect for the jurisprudence of our country and for the meaning of our constitution. So that my lord, uh, so that my landed friends can be able to speak for themselves, we are alleging that as long as the bench has been appointed by the Chief Justice who has declined to follow the fair process for purposes of appointment of the various judges to sit, there cannot be a valid appointment. Not because I and my colleagues here would have anything on a good day before any of you, Your Lordships. We have done very many matters. You have courageously stand up for the constitutions in various matters, but my Lord, unhappily, we have to be the ones saying that it would appear to a section half of this country, if not three quarters, that you have been enlisted in service of the violations of the constitutions. My Lord, I, that may not have happened, but that is the only way reasonable people would be able to interpret all this, particularly against the background that even the Gen Z were abducted. The substantive chief justice did not empanel a single bench to sit on Saturday or on Sunday. That is why this but the context in which this matter must be viewed. My Lord, there are certain authorities. My landed colleagues will go through them. But I need to mention at least two things. My Lord, of course, the arguments would be made. I, hear, I think there was some time back, probably in the Okiom Tata case, my landed colleague will... Uh, we will clarify where the deputy chief justice, the same deputy chief justice, made an appointment. There was no substantive chief justice at that time. There was a decision that was saying this is administrative. That decision is not binding. But my lord, more importantly now that this issue is arising directly, this court must retire, make a very reasoned decision to settle this issue. Whether in every other case in which the constitution or statute says so and so will do this, if that so and so does not do it without failure, the high courts and the court of appeal have always held there was no jurisdiction. An order of statutory have always issued. It shouldn't be different in this particular matter because the power belongs to the chief justice. But now the second issue is uh, a decision, I believe, uh, one of you was uh, involved. And uh, 
I believe it is it is a case of uh, Okoichi Omkata versus JSC, and the decision in uh, in that uh, decision was that uh, at paragraph 29 to 38, basically it says that where there is a substantive chief justice who is a state officer, she does not cease to be a chief justice in this era of uh, technology. And accordingly, the chief justice, the CJ, does not have authority under the constitutions to assign roles assigned to that office. So that, my lord, in this case, okay. even assuming that in writing the chief justice, had assigned this role to the deputy, and that has not been alleged. It would still not be good enough, because wherever that the good chief justice might be, this is something that she could have done as expected her. And the people of Kenya obviously would be interested because of the nature of, the, of this matter. Why would the chief justice abdicate to do her job and let her deputy to do her job in a manner that aggrieves the petitioners? That is an important question, because it is the job of the Chief Justice. There is a huge mandate that is given by the Chief Justice. Do your job with the entire authority that your office carries. So it cannot just be that it is for the Deputy Chief Justice who has usurped. It is also abdication. What would be the basis for abdication, the Chief Justice not to do their job? The other case of... Uh, just one minute, one second. The other case of, uh, I, I think my learned colleagues, so that it can be fast, I don't want people to knock, knock me. My learned, friend can, <laughs> my learned friend can do her. Let him do his 10 minutes, then he can do his 10 minutes. Thank you. Thank you very kindly, uh, my lords, my lady. I'll only highlight a few issues which are legal. I'll move from Article 1 of the Constitution, your lordships. That Article 1 has created organs of government, among them is the organ of the judiciary. And it has clearly provided your lordship that the people of Kenya, in exercise of their sovereignty, they have delegated their powers to those organs. In this case, the power under Article 165, Clause 4, is exclusively delegated to the Chief Justice. Your lordship in administrative law, we all, it's right that a person who enjoys delegated powers cannot further delegate those 